Almighty God, grant us the courage of Jesus Christ, your Son, to face the coronavirus pandemic with trust, strength, compassion, and resiliency. Give us the grace of the Holy Spirit to free us from fear and anxiety so we may do actions of help and support and look forward to our healing with hope. We pray for the health workers, food liners, maintenance cleaners, logistics abler, government leaders, and volunteers who continuously come together to deliver our daily needs to survive. Guide us from this time of crisis, preserve us in peace, protect the weak and vulnerable, and those who serve to society during this pandemic. This we ask and pray in Jesus' name, our Savior. Amen. Nagahatid saya sa mga Pinoy, mga kantang tatak Pinoy. Kahit nasan ka man, kami ay mapapakinggan. Streaming worldwide, the future of radio in Manila, California, and Hong Kong. This is V81 Radio. Malayo ka man sa iyong pamilya, dito ay hindi ka nag-iisa. Iyak ito'y iyong... Hahanap-hanapin Dahil ito ang nagpapasaya sa atin Views and opinions expressed are those of the program anchors and producers and do not necessarily reflect the policies and position of this station. We now bring you the program that brings together leading personalities, representative insights, all together in a meaningful and delightful conversation as your social barometer. Let's chat with Tita Gracie. Let's chat with Tita Breakthrough Millennial Boomer, Grace Venezuela, only here on V81 Radio.
Hello once again, and welcome to Let's Chat with Tita Gracie. Well, today marks day 50 of our ECQ. I know for many of you there, it um, we all have been trying to make the best out of our new lives, our new normal of living in quarantine in the time of uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Now, for a lot of people, the biggest problem when the whole quarantine started is going to happen to our the food that we need because all the stores were closed. Only the and and we had to line up for our basic uh, needs, our food needs in the supermarkets, and of course, it was very difficult for a lot of people to go around and go to the different supermarkets or shops where they would buy their food. Imagine prior to March, thinking about hopping into your car and going to your nearest restaurant or drive through fast food was just, you don't even think about it. You just do it. It was the easiest thing to do. But come March, the whole eating out and going to your favorite fast food or even ordering for delivery became a problem because all the establishments were closed and all the supermarkets were open only during a certain, you know, certain window during the day. And in fact, for some segments of the population, like the seniors, they couldn't even go out. They instructed to stay home because of the threat of COVID-19. And given that, um, a lot of people had to turn to something to find comfort some of them of course you know we were all glued to the tv sets looking at the news 24 7 and and it's very stressful but we find the some comfort and of course the number one thing is aside of course from prayer because everybody started to pray even those that didn't really you know weren't really into prayer uh we all had to pray for something, some miracle or, you know, some way that we would get through this. <clears throat> and the second thing that people looked at to find comfort is food. When I was thinking about what to feature for this particular episode, I was thinking food might be just the thing. Because 50 days into the ECQ... I think that um, some of you have already developed a routine and first, look at one, the thing that gave a lot of us comfort during these 50 days of quarantine, which is food. And today I am uh, so proud to introduce the featured celebrity, uh, the featured authority on food. Uh, she, is, uh, she has been a very good friend of since we were in college. And uh, she, we have seen her transition from being a, a student achiever. Uh, she was even teaching in our university at the time. And uh, her first foray into business was into fashion. And of course, we were young. We were, you know, it was a and we were just so delighted to, to um, see how she would maneuver herself into the world of the glamorous world of fashion. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Miss Vicky Veloso Barrera. Hi. Hi, Grace. Hi. Hello, Vicky. I'm so happy you could share your Sunday with us. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Well, um, everywhere here in Manila and even in the U.S. who are watching. So to all our friends in the U.S., hello, big hello from Vicky and myself. <laughs> and uh, so I was telling our audience that um, we, we have quite a history. Our friendship has gone mm -hmm. through so many yeah, years. Yes, yes. Thank and um, of course, um, our first foray into business was um, into fashion. And uh, I guess it was really timely because it was such a dynamic time to be in fashion during the 80s, right? Yes, yes. 
quite, yeah. <laughs> um, and then um, you've always also been interested in literature, in reading, yeah. uh, you know, writing. Because even as a high school girl, you would. Actually, the the food and the the writing they really go hand in hand. Because, in fact, my my very first um, childhood memories of being in the kitchen. I see. I remember myself as a toddler sitting in a high chair because my mom, Malu Peloso, was not into bridal gowns then. Her first line of work work was making wedding cakes. Imagine being oh. a is making all those sugar roses. It was so fascinating. I wanted to cook right there and then. But of course, she didn't let me because she said I was too young and I had to wait. And then later on, she did get into fashion. She became a fashion designer and became even more busy. And, yeah. and my, my father took pity on me. And he, when I was seven years old, her cookbook for boys and girls. So I basically taught myself to cook out of a cookbook. And since that time, I never stopped. So I always had that fascination for cooking because of my mom. And then I was a, it's a, a revelation because I always thought that since your Lola Marina was into wedding gowns and I yeah. knew your mom was also into fashion, I didn't realize she was also into no, cooking. They're all into food. They're all into food, my wow. Lola. Her brothers and then so 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 there and then since I love to read, so um aside from devouring everything in the library, our home library, and the school library. You know, I read my mom and my grandmother's cookbooks as if they were novels. I read them like cover to cover. So, Fantastic. Was, so yeah, I was still so young and I, I was already I already have had like ambitions, you know, like when I was eleven years old, I was already dreaming of like making my own puff pastry. I wanted to try, you know, I that those were my goals. And then uh, when my mom was pregnant with my youngest brother, Bootsy, uh, I was 11 then, and, my, and we contracted German measles. So we had to live in my, in my grandmother's house. And um, my mother was giving cooking classes at the time that summer. When we were able to come back, I continued some of her cooking classes for her. That's why at the age of 11, I already knew about giving cooking classes. Wow. And um, those uh, early years in your mom's kitchen and, and also being surrounded in a, in, in a fantastic environment of great cooks and great fashion and so inspiring. And, and really, um, it, it looked like your passions were already, you know, like formu being formulated, reading and, and writing cooking and teaching so you know like now that you have all these three passions combined into one fantastic project called tiny kitchen you know i um i i really think that um it's like it's like such a natural progression from all those years and then with your own cooking school now called tiny yeah. kitchen it's it's yeah. like all roads led to that part of your life Yes, even if I took literature as my major in college, because, you know, the writing is my number one love. My, I took an elective called child psychology, and we learned back then that uh, it would be very ideal for at least one parent to stay with the children until their age six. In fact, that's already been revised now, and I know that it's ideal for, if possible, to have one parent there full-time until their age 12. And that's stuck in my mind. Wow. Right? So one day when I get married, I want to work completely at home. Yes. You know, I want to work from, from home. And so uh, when I got when I got married, the first thing that I thought of was to put up uh, a cooking school for children because I was already writing. I had already published books. But I knew that from my writing for newspapers and magazines and, um, you know, book royalties that I'd never be able to, I wouldn't be able to make a living out of it. So that's wow. why the Tiny Kitchen started um, 22 years ago when I got married. And um, my children grew up in this environment. And uh, I work fully from home. So actually, this situation right now, working from home, it's, it's not abnormal for me. It is, it is my normal. It is so, your normal. Yes. yes. It and, normal. Uh, it's a great. It's it. It's like now everybody's trying to adjust to work from mm -hmm. home, 
Yeah. And uh, it has posed a lot of challenges, especially for moms or married people, because having to work in a house full of children of different ages is difficult if you are not used to working from home. And yeah. uh, given us the crisis that we're all facing right now, all the more uh, preparing home cooked meals is very important because, like yeah. I said earlier, you just can't call for delivery or hop into your car and go to a restaurant. Yes. So it's now a, a challenge, especially if you're not a seasoned cook or you're just starting to cook, right? It can be, yeah. a, can be a challenge. Now, um, uh, for uh, your teaching, you know, your, when you started to teach, you already had kids, right? The three of them were already around. I started the summer before. I started my my school right after I got married. So the school okay. was already running uh, for a year before my son was born. But you know, it wasn't. It, when I started, I had like nine students the first year. Then yes. the following year, I had like twelve. And then the following year, it became twenty. And then it, you know, it grew by word of mouth. It grew slowly. And then yes. after five years, they were fifty. And I said, "Okay, I'm wow. okay. I want to register already my business, no, and get my, you know, my proper business permits and all." And um, okay. now I I see well, except for this particular summer, I normally see like two to three hundred kids a year. Wow, in that's the summer. a lot. Yeah, in the summer, but we also have classes the the whole year because yes. there are homeschool children that come the, the rest of the year or kids that come on Saturdays or preschoolers. So we have three have students all year. Yeah. It's great because um, uh, cooking like uh, is, is a basic life skill. Yeah, it's a life skill. The younger you start learning how to cook and both boys and girls must learn how to cook. Yeah. Right? So yeah. uh, what Ratio, you do your kids, your students. Do you have a lot of boys also, or just no. mostly? No. Yes. Um. Uh. We they used when we first started. Uh. I had like thirty percent boys and seventy percent girls, and then when the Master Chef, uh, phenomenon started, wow. then we they were like 50-50. But for the last three to four years, the enrollment of the boys has been more than the girls. A bit more. Wow. They're like fifty-five percent, and it's really interesting because boys are not are not expected to know how to cook, right? So when a boy yes. enrolls and then keeps coming back, you know he's really serious. I mean, he's yes. he's there because he want he really wants to learn. So it, it's fun, and the things that they like to cook are different from the girls. So it, 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 it's it's nice, and and that actually is. Uh, it's consistent with the with the phenomenon that there are more male chefs than female chefs. Yeah, so because I, well, you know, professionally there are really, yeah. you see more professional males as chefs. In yes, the, in the because commercial actually, kitchen. it's quite a tough job physically to work yes. in a commercial kitchen or a restaurant. It really is a tough job. So really, that's also why there are a lot of there are a lot more men there. But you know, like for I always tell my that my students, I said, even if you don't want to become a chef one day, I mean, you have to learn how to cook because if you don't know how to cook, someone's going to have to cook for you or you're going to have to buy your food. Or So it, True. it's probably and, um my, my goal is for them to see it as something fun. You know, yes. so that's why my style of teaching is hands-on. It's completely individualized. There's no watching me do things. No, they each get their own individual workspaces. They do everything from beginning to end. And um, I do not teach simplified things for children. I teach them as I would a grown up. So there's no kiddie recipes. No, it's like they're making yeast yes. dough. The real thing is doing pie crust. So the, so the tiny kitchen philosophy is very hands on. Yeah. And the girls and the boys are, you know, they go through the whole nine yards of preparing a particular recipe. Each mm -hmm. student station to work yeah. and everything from knife skills they cut everything they measured and they cook yeah not well, the knife skills, when they're still young we let them practice first like with knives that are not sharp just to let them get used to doing that because we don't really let the we don't let them handle sharp knives until like they're a bit older 
you know, of because course, yeah. you know, safety is the most important thing. So we don't let them do anything stove top until I feel that they're old and mature enough. And even when they are old and mature enough, no one is forced to do like frying. And a lot of kids opt na nga, even to not fry and instead to roast or steam foods like chicken because it's also healthier. You know, this generation yeah. now, they're very conscious. They read the labels. Really? They eat things that they eat things that, you know, like... Uh, for us, I mean, they're into more into salads now, whereas maybe 10 years ago, my students wouldn't touch that. And they're substituting, you know, quinoa and aglai for rice in their houses. So it's so the kids different. are very, uh, they're the consciousness as far as uh, nutritious eating yeah. and yeah. the variety of uh, food ingredients has broadened. Yes. Of course, they're still, you know, their favorites. You know, you can't, you can't yes. get away from that. And and I like to, I like to indulge them as much as I can because I always tell the parents, you know, I'm not my my job as a teacher. I think is to teach them to love and to love cooking and see it as a joy and not a chore. So I'm not gonna force yes. them to eat all like purely healthy food. I want them to eat food that they like. You know, so they eat pizzas and pastas and apple pie and cookies and corn cupcakes and you know all the all these things that, that children love so that's that's what they do yeah so cooking since it's a life skill it's something that should be enjoyed it's something yeah. that the kids should appreciate as part of daily living yeah, yeah. It's not something that you relegate to your cook or your yaya or your helper right it's important mm -hmm. that they become proactive in the kitchen yeah. No, and it's a nice break, whatever your work is like. For me, I, when I'm not teaching, I work on my books. And then yes. when I'm, after a while, you want the break, so I go to the kitchen and then I'll cook. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice break. It's a nice, um, it's a nice hobby. And then um, nowadays, of course, most people have a lot of time. So if they're not experienced yeah. books, this is the time to learn. And those who are experienced now have the chance to do the things that they normally would not have the time to do um, in the week. In, in the weeks that have passed, um, the shopping situation has also improved. And yes. uh, right from I noticed like lately in the restaurants, the there it's like getting better stocked. And also there are so many suppliers now. Uh, there are so many individuals that deliver all sorts of things from baking needs to seafood to vegetables. So you know there's it's getting it's getting better. So there's yes. a lot of things that they can experiment with. So. That's, that's so actually, the scenario for shopping, the first few weeks of the lockdown, since everybody was caught and was shocked with the situation and all the stores had to be closed, there was a bit of a, a problem as far as um, stocking and finding the right uh, ingredients. But right now, I think that communities have, um, you know, like people are resourceful. And like even in my community, there's now a weekly vegetable uh, uh, market they set up in our park, which is similar to the green market in Salcedo or in Legazpi. And there's a, a farm, a group of farmers that are one of our resourceful people here in the community have contacted from Benguet. So we now have a, an organic market on a weekend, and I think that's being echoed in a lot of communities in Metro yeah. Manila. Yeah. And because you've got, not, aside from the supermarkets, you've also got the, the wet markets. And then yes. there are Korean groceries. There are delicatessens. No? Um, yeah. There are organic stores in our area, proudly green on Mother Ignacia. It's still open every day. And you have options, you know. Yes, so, yes. You're not so... There's a lot, there's, 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 that's a good word, options. Because I think what's important now is that... Um, are not just limited to whatever canned goods or relief goods that that you know that are out there in a situation like what we're facing after the initial i mean 50 days into the ECQ we've sort of developed our new normal uh, and of course we are now um not to say that we're relaxed but we've adjusted quite well. Even me and my household, we've adjusted quite well. And even here in the community. And you're right. There's a lot of time. 
So if on our hands, so instead of being bored or watching Netflix all day or, you know, um, st staying stuck to the news with all the bad news that you hear, it's great that you refocus your energies and take a look at, okay, why, why, what if I learn a new recipe or try out something different for your family's dinner this weekend? And, and certainly, there's no lack of time now in our hands because everybody is home. So, um, you know, I'm going to revisit all of that later. But before uh, we proceed, I just want to take a quick look at the books of, in your Tiny Kitchen uh, series. So uh, I know that the first book that you wrote was the uh, Kitty Cookbook was Tiny Kitchen. And we're showing the logo right now. That's yeah. a tiny kitchen. Um, and then you have the not too tiny kitchen yeah. right so that was part two um these two cookbooks what what's the basic premise there what what are the um I wanted, yeah i wanted to do for kids what that betty crocker cookbook you know when i was seven years old did for her. i wanted a cookbook where they could cook without me so that's why mm -hmm. I, I it's all step by step with drawings with drawing illustrations, which I did, and it's all step by step. And then it has pictures of my first uh, batch of students. So yes. when they opened it and they saw the pictures of the, the kids inside, they said, oh, you know, she, she could do that. I mean, I could do that. I can do yes. that. Yes. So it was, this was, very, this was, this was very popular. So see, the, from, the, yes. from, the, from the start, we had boys. So that's yeah. what not so not so tiny kitchen not so, that's a, that not so tiny kitchen is more of the same and yeah. you're talking to the kitty market oh, right yeah. um, easy recipes that children can easily prepare in their homes yeah now, um after that there's a nice cookbook about edible gifts is that it, uh, yeah edible gifts and um it came out in two in, it, it came out like in, in two editions. So edible gifts, so okay. these are things that uh, can bake to give us gifts. And there are also things that you can uh, make to sell. So yes. they, come, they come with uh, packaging uh, suggestions. There's even a list of suppliers for ingredients, wholesale ingredients, wholesale packaging. Um, in the book, there's even, um, I even explain about costing, how to, yes. how to cost ingredients and that's it's very time. interesting those yeah. those we have a very interesting of, yes because a lot of a lot of people now are preparing stuff in their kitchen to sell to their neighbors yeah no and kids because a lot of i don't have to tell my students to sell what they make they're the ones that 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 start selling on their own so uh, and wow. some kids really ask me to teach them those that have been coming for a long time ask me to teach them things specifically to sell so that's why I have a course called Tiny Kitchen, Tiny Kitchen Entrepreneur. So it's for it's just focusing on things that they can sell, desserts and main dishes, sauces, etc. Amazing. Yeah. That's great. And then you came out with a cookbook for the newlywed. Yeah. Which is cooking for two. two. Okay, can you tell me a little bit about that? Cooking for two? Yeah. That this is like a food diary of um, this is like a food diary of what me and my husband ate the six months of our marriage because even if he likes something that i make he doesn't want to see it again for a long time so i had to learn how to portion the food that it would make exactly two servings you know so there are no leftovers and you know that it's not just as simple as chopping a recipe in half no i especially yes you really have to test it so like i said it's like a food diary of what we ate for the first six months and it's been reprinted so many times um, in hard cover version, so it could be given as a wedding gift in soft cover version for young couples, single people, empty nesters, you know. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's quite Yeah, amazing. those are amazing books because it's so important to have the right references mm -hmm. at home. Because yeah. you never know, uh, like, you know, there are dining occasions when you can, when you can easily, uh, you know, remember an heirloom recipe, for instance, that you, your mom passed down or your lola passed down. But if you want to innovate and you want to have something different, 
or or uh, something exciting like for a change and especially now people are so uh, adventurous in the kitchen uh, those two cookbooks are great for for um, newlyweds or even condo dwellers so that you know portioning cooking for one or two people could be a challenge because yes, it is. You know, portioning is important and buying yes. just the right ingredients for a recipe right and if you buy an imported cooking for two, it's not the food that we Pinoys eat. You know, yes. so it has to have like rice dishes. It has to have like you know your Pinoy comfort food uh, favorite. So it's it's all there. It um, it was designed that uh, everything could be done in um, I forget if it's thirty or forty minutes or less. So there are even yeah. other like before you go before you leave for work defrost now your meat in the ref so that by the time you get home it's like ready to go and it's it's all there and uh ah. yeah, so i am i am I am, a, I am a big fan of preparing things ahead of time so uh this one a worldwide piece which is an entertaining cookbook so these are these it's um it's menus from all over the world including filipino menus and uh, yeah. it with like a section that tells you, like for this menu, what can you do five days ahead? What can you do three days ahead, two days ahead? What can you do the morning of the... So the whole point is so that when people come over, you're not slaving away in the kitchen. Everything that you could have done in advance is done in advance. I even advise, I think, better to have served the food buffet style, have already a drink station, you know, set up a bar where people can help themselves, you know, stuff like that. So that yes, actually that's interesting. You know, I'm in the events business and planning the food flow and how the buffet should be set up and the way the, you are going to serve your beverages, your cocktails, your hors d'oeuvres, your main dish, there's method to that. Yeah, yeah. I think that Perfect. when you create you you uh, uh, a party, when you plan for a party, there must be a method as well. Mm -hmm. Because you're right, as the hostess, you'll be slaving away in the kitchen and you won't enjoy. Yeah, yeah, you, don't want that. yeah. yeah. you don't so, want that, right? Yeah. No, my my late father-in-law, Ambassador Sergio Barrera, uh, he was really, I mean, he was protocol officer also to to, to President Corey. Um, when he was still alive, most most Saturdays, he and my mother-in-law and their friends would have dinner here in my house. So I'm wow. quite entertaining, even from before, when I when yeah. we, from so way back. I, I, you, you've always been a fantastic hostess. And I remember in our youth, we had such fantastic parties. And I remember that you there were some signature recipes that uh, up to this day, uh, whenever I visit your mom and let let in in um in your town, they're 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 there, and it's like it's like going back to those days when I when I taste your tapenade and and you know your mom's uh, uh favorite dessert, yeah, yeah, and, and her yeah, chicken. That's my recipe. Yeah, that that's so. You know, I love those recipes, and I think once a year when I go there, like during the holiday season, that's what Let Let prepares, and and you know it's it's a great reunion. It, it's we always talk over you know a lunch would slide to merienda because like we just don't wanna you know just reminiscing and talking about that and really food occasion um, an event with great food creates fantastic memories yeah so I, that I come from a family of party givers you know my mom likes entertaining my grandmother loved entertaining and yeah. uh, I was actually I was actually living with her until right before I got married you know I was uh, she asked me to live with her for a while, so I did, and she was telling me all the time, you saw my place, have parties here, you know, you yes, saw my this beautiful house. Yeah. And it is, uh, it, it's been marked as, uh, since it's the home it's of, uh, yeah, it's an art. important cultural What's property. What's that marker that the government yeah. plays? Yes, it's an important cultural property, so it has, it has value, and it is, to be preserved and uh, defended even by the government if there was like a war or something. So oh, wow. yeah, because that's designed by my my late grandfather, national national artist Pablo Antonio. 
Yes. And it's really um, a, a, a very good example of tropical architecture that works, you know, in this country that gets it's actually getting hotter and more humid, I think. With their but it's great. It's house. always cool. Yes, yeah. That house and even your your other your house in Protasio, that architecture is always so fantastically cool. Inside, yeah. You know? yeah. And I, I remember the yeah, go ahead. I sometimes give uh, classes for adults in Samora, the early part oh, of the yeah. year. Yeah, before my before my summer classes um, start this year, I didn't have time. But sometimes I have classes also there for adults when I don't when I'm not busy with the summer classes. Yeah, well, that's uh, amazing. You know, when this lockdown is over, I'm sure that a lot of people will want to visit uh, that house. You know, and have mm -hmm. and I think you can book that house for yeah. for gatherings, right? Yeah, I mean, you you're booking for events. So creative and so entrepreneurial. I, she's my idol. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then uh, my, mom and my sisters, uh, they've got their their fashion, you know, their fashion display there. So you, you can, yeah, and then you can uh, book meals there. My son has an art exhibit. Uh, he has an exhibit of his oh. artwork there. So it, you know, it's a it's a house that's that's living, you know. And um, yes. So and how many generations of Antonios already from your from grandfather? Four. Yeah. So that's what four generations. Yeah, yeah. My kids Great. are the fourth generation. Yeah. Now, you, uh, finally, there is a special coffee table book that that is uh, really interesting, and it's called Cape, a Philippine uh, coffee yeah. cookbook. Can you tell yeah. us a little bit about that? It's not. It's not a coffee table book. It's a book about coffee. I oh, cook okay. with shit one. So the first part of that cookbook is all about Philippine coffee. She does that part, no? Philippine coffee and then how to brew coffee properly and even without any special equipment. And the second half is what to serve with coffee. So it's everything from yeast breads to cakes, cookies, Filipino uh, specialties. So that's the that's the that's the combination. And that won the National Book Award in the leisure category in 2003. So wow. that year, that year for the National Book Award, there were only two cookbooks nominated: Worldwide Feast, which is mine, and then Capel, which yes. is also. So. Bravo, Vicky! I am just so proud of your literary accomplishments. Yeah. And I said earlier, it's so unique that you were you know, for a person to put all three of her passions together in one great passion project under the tiny kitchen brand. And yeah. I do. Know that um, the future looks very exciting for Tiny yeah. Kitchen. Now, ladies and gentlemen out there, I know that you're excited to see what uh, we have in store for you today because in our next segment, we're going to show some videos of some fantastic comfort food guaranteed to make you smile. So don't go away. We're going to go on a quick break. This is Tita Gracie, and this is Let's Chat with Tita Gracie. We'll be back shortly with Tita Gracie. Let's chat with Tita Gracie only here on V81 Radio. Technology allows us to explore a variety of opportunities. So why not grab one for you? Kickstart your online business with Big Penta. Create an account. Visit our store builder. Then make your online shop. Be visible. Gain customers and run your business hassle-free. Plus, enjoy the support of our local merchandising team to maximize our platform. Make technology work for you with Big Benta. Pinoy e-commerce site made for you. After this pandemic, let's support the Filipino community. Buy local. Visit local. Go local. Para enjoy ang pakikinig sa V81 Radio kahit saan. We are now on your Amazon Echo devices. Just say, Alexa, play V81 Radio. At i-enjoy ang inyong mga paboritong Pinoy music 24-7. Sabihin lang, Alexa, play V81 Radio. May items ka na gustong ibenta? Or planning to buy something specific? Visit PinoyAds.ph a free online classified ads na available to all. Post an ad. 
Para sa item na you want to sell Or browse through the listing To find out what you're looking for Connect with the community To explore Discover Buy and sell Be the boss of every transaction Sa PinoyAds.ph After this pandemic, let's support the Filipino community Buy local Visit local Go local Kabayan, nahuhomesick ka ba? I-download na ang aming mobile app at mag-enjoy sa mga kantang Tatak Pinoy and feel like you're home. The V81 Radio Mobile App, available in the App Store and Google Play Store. V81 Radio Mobile App, free now, free forever. Tunog Pinoy, Tatak Pinoy. The future of radio. This is your all hits all Pinoy internet radio station. This is V81 Radio Worldwide. Ito ang paborito ng bawat Pilipino. Basta all hits all Pinoy. Panalo. Merong kwentong iyakan at tawanan. Kahit na saan ka man ito'y mapapakinggan. Radio.